when I was 13, I hacked my entire computer system. Now, before I start, I want to provide you a little bit of context of who I was back then in 2010. That's me. Isn't that the next Steve Jobs? I think so. Wait a second. There we go. Much better now. So, the school director called my father and said, Mr. Marinelli, we have a problem here. Your son just hacked our entire school system. And then my father said, wait a minute. Did my 13-year-old boy hack your entire school system? Yep. You probably need to buy a better one. I said, wow, wait a second. My father is backing me up here. He probably thinks I'm a genius. That didn't happen. The moment I got into his car, he said, son, when you stop wasting your time doing useless stuff, instead of applying it for a good reason, the geniuses I know have a very specific purpose behind them. And you don't have one. And I thought, well, it's very easy to say. But how do I find my purpose then? Being very honest, at that time I didn't actually know what purpose meant. I was too busy hacking my friend's Facebook account, and later on they would call me and say, Igor, someone hacked my account, can you please help me find out who that was? I was like, wow, I'm afraid I can't do it. And a week later I would email them the password again because I was just like, I wasn't me. <laughs> So they will have it back. So my father, he wasn't really upset with that, all, all that situation, but also he wasn't impressed at all. His whole point was, what hacking those systems are actually bringing something good for society? And His whole point was, in order to find your purpose, it's actually very simple. All you got to do is start by being useful. Start by being useful. So, I never actually fit the traditional learning methods. I've always changed my own ways of learning. And learning is very different from schooling, and I want to highlight that here. I think Mark Twain points that very perfectly when he says, I have never let schooling interfere with my education. So, and sometimes my way of learning was pretty stupid, like hacking something. What for? But I've always prioritized learning before schooling from everything I did. But I was just missing the usefulness connection in my actions. So four years later, I came across to that situation in Brazil when I saw this father begging for help for his child who was seeking for medical treatment. And like this father, there were many other children, many other fathers in that situation seeking for urgent health treatment. So I thought, wait a minute. I guess that's my chance of being useful now. I can help somehow, somehow. So I can go, I can learn how to code, I can create a platform, I can connect those fathers with donators, and I did. I found an NGO named SDH, and we've done impressive work so far. We ran into national media, we got 100 volunteers, we raised 100k Brazilian reais, and we helped over 50 children who need crucial health care. That moment, I think I realized that, like, I just didn't wake up one day and said, hey, I found my purpose, is helping children. It just doesn't happen that way. I think some people just sit down and magically wait for their purpose to come. And it won't come. I've never thought I would be helping children, and yet I'm helping dozens of them every day. So, in order to find your purpose, 
All you gotta do is to focus in those two questions. And the first one is, what am I learning? The second is, for whom am I being useful? The people we know and admire today, they follow those two questions. Their drive is usefulness. And when your drive is usefulness, you go from a thing to project to project, and then you realize, I think that's the place where I want to uh, work for a bigger period of time now. And I want to have a more meaningful impact. Um, a, lot of time, a lot of times I hear in my NGO, I'm just here because I want to help. That's what I call a 100% usable approach. And the 100% usable approach is actually very dangerous. What I ask those people is, first, what are you taking from this yourself? What are you actually learning? How are you making your own life better? It doesn't actually work to just be useful and forget about your priorities and your needs. And from that, something very funny happened. I, the technology that I created for my NGO, I noticed that this could change. This could transform the reality of more NGOs. And I just decided to write my bachelor thesis about it. So I approached my professor and said, hey, I have a very interesting topic I want to research on. It's blockchain technology applications for financial transparency and nonprofit organizations. <laughs> I always wonder why bachelor thesis title has such a big name. I don't know exactly, but they do. So then I said, because my NGO is using that, that technology, I think others NGO can benefit from that, and I want to make it public, and I want to inspire other uh, people to think that way. There's just this one small detail. I'm writing it and dropping out of college the very next day. I was like, what? You're just missing a semester to get your degree. I said, but what for? Why do I need this piece of paper as a proof of what I know? If I kept being there, I wouldn't be useful for, the, for my university this one semester. I wouldn't be useful for myself. I wouldn't be useful for others. So then, he accepted my terms. I wrote it, I published it. With that dedication for Alexandra Yarutska, which is actually my girlfriend, who encouraged me to write my bachelor thesis and drop out right after. I still don't know how to accept that, but it's there. <laughs> you can check out in their website. Uh, why did I highlight this here? Because the conditions are very important. I was able to drop out of college because I had this structure behind it. I had people who encouraged me. Family, friendships, relationships. I know that it's not simple as that. You're unsatisfied with your major and just saying, Okay, I'm dropping out, right? Some people can't do that because they don't have the proper conditions to do that. So in order to be useful, remember about your needs. Remember about yourself in that process. Fill yourself with people that you love. Nurture your relationships, your good friendships, and push away the other that are not uh, summing up for you so that you'll be able to really follow your dream and find your purpose. So, I noticed one thing. People in general are always saying that you got to finish cycles, what they call cycles. Uh, it can be your college. It can be one year of your work. It can be whatever, you, the yoga class, for example, which I never get to the end, very hard. But those cycles might not even exist, right? They are this fictional creation to keep you doing what you already know you didn't want to be doing. So if you know you want to sell good tapioca, why not go in there and selling the best tapioca ever? If you know engineering is not your thing, why not seeking for another thing, right? So I think society misunderstands what's a challenge that's worth fighting for. So a lot of times you 
just end up in a challenge that you're not learning anything, you're not being useful to anyone, and that's what I call a unusable challenge. It's hard, and you have to go through that. And you're probably going to waste a lot of your time in that, right? But I came up with that schedule, uh, with that scheme, which is that in a place that you're learning, and in a place that you're being useful, this intersection here is full, full of challenges. And they might be even more hard than those challenges that are those unusable challenges. That's what I call a usable challenge. The people we admire today, they are extremely committed, extremely committed to useful challenges, right? They're not wasting their time in a place that they, they don't want to be. And that intersection here where we call challenges over and over and over, it's actually purpose. That little intersection here is where you have the space to find your purpose in life. My purpose in, li my purpose in life is that. I'll probably change it over and over again, 10 more times over my life. But I know that what drives me in the morning, my drive is utility. Is that being useful for someone? I'll keep doing it. I'll keep doing it and I'll do my best. And I'm still learning from it. I'll keep doing it. So being useful is a mindset. And like any mindset, it starts with a decision. What are you doing good for the world? For you, it can be painting. It can be crafting. It can be selling tapioca. It can be formal schooling, all right? I think I didn't highlight that. If your thing is formal schooling, for God's sakes, go, go for it, right? Start by being useful, and your purpose will come. Thank you.